Hey, what's happening? This is Frederick Nicholson, music director for the Denton Black Film Festival, and we want to welcome you to this edition of Soul Talk. And uh, first of all, I want to thank our sponsor, KXAS NBC5, right here in the DF Dub, for helping make it all possible. And tonight, well, that music you were just listening to was a, a great musician and uh, somebody I sort of consider a friend and, and just, a, just an all-around good guy, uh, Brother Sean Martin. So if you guys uh, don't know who he is, you've heard his, his music and his production work uh, all over the place. So, uh, you know, I just want to welcome him here. And uh, Sean, yeah. are you there? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Can you, oh, cool, can you hear me? cool, cool, man. Yeah, I can hear you. It was so quiet. I felt like I was all alone. So, I'm man, <laughs> yeah, man, this is just, you know, an honor to, to have you here. Uh, I've known you since you were a young pup. Uh, out of right. Dallas, uh, I was here in the in the Metroplex. I finished school at North Texas, and and I heard about all these all these what I call kids back then, who went to Booker T. and I and I was sort of amazed that uh you know that whole crop of musicians that you were a part of in the uh, in the mid '90s. So uh, I guess you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your upbringing here in Dallas, and and we'll just roll. We're, we're gonna be all over the place today, yesterday, tomorrow, all kind of stuff. So yeah, tell tell us a little bit about. Uh, Sean Martin and how you kind of came to be in this music game. Oh, okay. Well, well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, definitely uh, a, a protege of Fred Nielsen uh, <laughs> and the, you know the whole the whole crew. Yeah, man. Born and raised in Dallas, Texas. Uh, took classical lessons in Oak Cliff, you know, in Oak Cliff, Texas. Uh, been playing now for about uh, years. <laughs> um, I just say a really long time, um, you know, and of course the whole Booker T, uh, affiliation is always something that I'm proud of because it was a great chance for me to go to a school with like-minded people and do like-minded things. Right. You know? And so I think that fostered a lot of the creativity, um, that you see, uh, today. And then of course I went from there to Weatherford college and then from Weatherford college to uh, University of North Texas, where I was able to study at Weatherford, I was able to study Tom Burchill, a phenomenal guitarist uh, here in the city, and then at Dan Hurley at the University of North Texas. So, you know, I totally, you know, understand, you know, the trek of the UNT music program. It's nothing to be taken lightly, but it's a beautiful thing. But oh, I say, yeah. you know, you know, started doing, you know, the, the cool thing about Booker T was Booker T, it helped link a lot of us that were in God's property together, right? So, you know, a lot of us, we all went to high school and we all went to church together, most of us, you know? So Absolutely. there was there was this connection that you were able to, you know, do the, you know, go to church, go to school, same people, and it just kind of fostered into this thing. You know? Oh, yeah. And we're, and we're all still friends to this day. Oh, yeah. Time. And I can tell you, you know, I, I can just full disclosure, you know, I'm actually a musician myself, although I work in a lot of different areas. And I can tell you what I always noticed from afar was like what you just said, Booker T is a tribe of musicians. And, and in order to have a scene, you got to have musicians that are kind of interdependent and work with each other in different settings. And I can always That's tell right. you guys had more fun playing music. You know whether it was you know probably making money or not when you were young, but you oh, had yeah. so much fun and 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 that that energy you know uh, it exuded out to the audience and people who heard you guys because people would always ask me say man do you know these guys you know uh, Sean Martin and, and Robert C Wright and, and all these different people right. who uh, who were at Booker T in, in the early and mid '90s so man I'm I just want to say how proud I am of what you guys how 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 you guys put Dallas on the map because really that benefited and lifted all boats. You know, people used to ask me when I was out on the road somewhere talking, man, do you know this cat? I was like, oh mm -hmm. yeah, man, he, he's just a regular cat. They'd be like, man, you know, and, and they would have seen y'all in, in another context. So man, that's big ups to D-Town and to all you guys that that remain friends and and quality musicians. I mean, super high quality musicians. So yeah, yes, that, that, that's a real, that's an honor, man, for you guys. You gotta be proud of that, you know. Well, I grew up in Memphis well, and, and a lot of cats in Memphis, you know, they still kind of belong to that Al Green, you know, Otis Redding, Barcase, that's yeah. that that was their that was their clique. But you guys have your own clique, you know, they came through in the Dallas ways, you know. And we're gonna talk about some of those other artists tonight also. But yeah, just know that that's you know, if I know you already know, but know that that's a super important thing to have that that tribe of musicians that you know for right sure. here from your hometown, you know. For sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. 
So, so tell me, so, so how did, how did you come about like, like joining God's property or how did that kind of evolve it? You know, for those out there that remember Stomp and that big Grammy award winning and all that stuff, how, how did you kind of evolve to get to that point from like from high school, I guess, you know? Well, I wasn't, I was never good at sports. So because I wasn't <laughs> good at sports. I just pretty ahead and did the whole music thing. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and like I say, you know, um, back then, back in the nineties, man, there was a, there was a, a centralized position of gospel music. And what I mean by that is some of the best gospel music, in my opinion, you know, was happening in the late 80s, early 90s. You had Milton Bronson and the Thompson Community Singers. You had Ricky Dillard and New G. You had, um, of course, the Hawkins Singers. They definitely legends. You know, oh, yeah. Chicago Commission. Mad, yeah. Commission, <laughs> DFW Mass. You know, you, so you, you had all of these, um, all take six. You, know, you, you had all of these groups and it was a thing of really wanting to emulate not necessarily the music but the passion and the joy you know um and and, and, and of course you know you know we you know, was our church kids so we was always in church uh, we was, i was talking to a friend the other day and i was like you know i think one of the reasons why i never really got into any kind of trouble was because i was always at church <laughs> you know I was, like, I was always at church so that's you know, good man yeah, I like I we stayed in church. There's always a musical. There was always a rehearsal. There was always, you know, if you're Baptist, you had, you know, uh B Baptist training, you know, if you coaching, you had YPWW, you know, you you had all of these different things that everybody, you know, was always into. So, you know, you know, the whole thing, you know, of going to high school, and then after, you know, after you get out of school, you know, and we go to you know, have rehearsals, you know, wherever. And then, really, what kind of what kind of shook the boat was when when Linda Seawright, she's the lady that founded God's Property. What shook the boat was when Linda Seawright started getting us on these Bobby Jones explosions. So Bobby Jones is a gospel music pioneer in Absolutely. the TV in the TV world. He had a, yeah. he had a show on BET for a long time. That's the right, Bobby Nashville. Jones. I know about it. That's, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> remember, we had the Nat, remember we had the Nashville Super Choir? Yeah, that's all, it. You know, all that. So, you know, but he was he was one of the few people that had a nationally shown gospel show. And every summer he would do, started out being every summer, and then progressed past that. But he started out doing these things called the Bobby Jones Gospel Explosion. And he'd get all the gospel artists, no matter oh, yeah. where you were from, you know, and, you know, you could go and be on the explosion, you know. And that's kind of what jumped it off. What jumped it off was when we were able to go do that. And Bobby Jones really kind of pulled us in and was like, you know, you know, can y'all sing with Ricky Grundy? Can y'all sing with Douglas Miller? Can y'all sing with the, the and we were learning these songs on the spot like that. Because yeah. remember, we're we're all performing arts kids. So there you, you know, go. So we can learn a song in five minutes. <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. you know, you know, we, we were used to that. So, you know, so that was the whole uh catalyst i'll say you know or the beginning i'll say of, of god's property and so we all just kind of kept doing it you know you know, yeah. you know we all stay together so so uh, like taking off from that same point i know when kirk franklin and god's property when that kind of thing kind of hit in the early 90s there was a lot of resistance and pushback to the way gospel music was being performed or it was adding a more contemporary, you know, almost like a little street hip hop level to it. And a lot of people pushed back against that. So was that ever like a, something that was conscious with what you guys were doing? Or you guys just played, you know, express what y'all felt or, or did y'all ever like consciously just kind of say, man, we're going to make something and, and push the envelope because, you know, you know, that was a real thing in the nineties of like, mm -hmm. well, I don't, that's not real gospel. You know, that's not that, but you know, you guys knew what you were doing, but it, it was, I would, my older relative would always say, I don't know about that. You know, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah I mean, th there was, there was always, a, there was always a resistance, but, but any, anytime a genre goes further, it's always going to be, you know, people that's, that's behind, behind the times I'll say that they're going to kind of have a thing, but you got to remember, Fred, we were 16, 17 years old. We right. care. I mean, <laughs> there you, you know, go. Like, 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 oh, you know, that's not how it's a, that's not how gospel music is supposed to go. We care. Yeah. You know, the the one the one thing the one thing that we want to do, we want to make sure that we stay out of trouble. We want to make sure that you know, you know, that, that we honored our religious commitments. 
you know, and we wanted to make sure that we were having fun and making great music. And Absolutely. I mean, that was and that was that was really it, you know. People and and the thing about it is, with, with when Kirk had Kirk had the family, you know, and a lot of them were older, right? And so how that marriage kind of came about was, you know, you know, he had the family and they were older and more mature, but at the same time, Kirk at that time was 23, 24 years old. Yeah. So now, yeah. so now you got this 23, 24 years, you know, 23, 24 year old dude, you know, that's you no know, can't sing, but he has a, a magical pen. And so then he gets with this young group of energetic high schoolers. Yeah. What's your thing is gonna? Happen? I mean, you know, it's like, like you know, so <laughs> so now, now he's able to be himself without because the one the one thing religion will teach you sometimes, sometimes, some in some cases, you know, is that you have to do what's been already done, right? Yeah. That's that's what makes it what religious, right? You know, so and so did it this way, so and so did it this way, and it's like and it's like you really kind of don't have to do it that way, you know. And again, yeah. you and again, you're talking about a group of a, a choir or group of singers and musicians that we all love, we all love Jesus, and we all love jazz. And there are no rules in jazz. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, you know, yeah. we, we, we all studied Bach and Beethoven. We all studied, you know, you know, you know, we all sang, you know, in uh, uh, Hallelujah Chorus, Man is Messiah. You know, we, you know, we all, we all did all that. And then we all listen to John Coltrane. You know, and, and, you and then we listen, then we listen, then we listen to Freddie Hubbard. Man, I, I still remember, I mean, just from a musical standpoint, we used to sneak out, go to clubs just to hear y'all play. Cause that yeah. was a that was a <laughs> highlight for us. You know what I'm saying? You know, my mom's like, I'm 15 years old. Where are you going? Spend a night over at RC half. My mom, his mom, where are you going? Spend a night over at half. Where are you going? We hanging out with Jason Davis. And we was concocting all these lies just to go hear good music. Go to go to go sit on the stoop and hear Marshall Ivory was a joy to us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You, you know, yeah, like you exactly. Know, you know what I'm saying. Like, like you know, now just as much as we love Jesus, you know, and we went out, went out, you know, going out and getting drunk and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because because that because that kind of stuff didn't matter to us. We we yeah. we want we wanted to go hear Went Marshallers at at Sample because we wanted to go, if Herbie Mann was in town. You know, you know, we we wanted to go here. You know, if Herbie Hancock was coming through. We, we just wanted to go here and be in the room and soak it all up. So that Absolutely. that was the kind of that was the kind of environment that that we were um, in. And so so for us, you know, everything was was everything. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, sneak out to go hear the road crew. You know, from now from there, that, that, was, <laughs> that was our thing. Yeah. See, you bringing people in a, in a national audience to DBFF to to hear about all these local artists that were legendary in the metro place in Dallas Fort Worth that that influenced even artists that you know you go, you guys stood on the shoulders and and took it even further because like I say I've been I've been following you since you know like I say since ninety five and all that and on past and now here we are every time I see a record of Kirk Franklin or other people I see. Sean Martin, maybe co-writer, co-producer, or Grammy winner, yeah. and I'm like, man, I remember the day. So, 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 just I, I don't want to spend too much time on too many other arts. I do want to focus on <clears throat> on Sean Martin's music. So, like, yeah. like, 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 with your relationship with an artist like Kirk, like Kirk Franklin, I mean, he does like get writing credit for all those great pieces, and I, but I can tell there's a lot of influences from you guys that play in the band, you know, that are part of, you know. Uh, you know the makeup of Kirk Franklin, man, and and, and I know you guys just—it's got to just be like a just a outrageous pleasure to hear that music come from wherever y'all started out in the rehearsal hall with him or whatever, but him just playing the piano, and then I'm hearing the drum beat and Tom and you know and he's Tom Joyner or whoever Steve Harvey playing the music and it's worldwide. So how does that yeah. feel as an artist? You know, for you just to—I mean, I know you're a humble cat because I—I've I, known you for 20 years or more, but I mean, I, it's got to feel good just to say, man. I had no idea when I was in middle school or wherever, you know, that this day would come, you know, and I'd be hearing my music on Sirius XM or wherever else. So tell me a little bit how that touches Sean Martin, you know. No, man, I mean, I, I mean, I love it. I've, I've always kind of had the notion of wanting to be a musician that can, you know, kind of cross all the, you know, cross all the T's and dot, dot all the I's, right? So so one of my one of my favorite producers of all time is actually Quincy Jones, right? Quincy Jones is, is, you know, super dope. You know, trumpet player, arranger, producer. You know, you know, songwriter. He can do it. He can do it all. And so, the, at the end of the day, he doesn't just put 
all his eggs in that one basket, you know. And you know, I've always kind of tried to emulate that pattern. You know, I mean, it, I mean, it feels and 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 not just musically, but also sonically. And what I mean by that is, you know, you know, having you know sounds that are current, having progressions that are current. You know, because it it feels great to be able to listen to a Kirk Franklin record, that, you know, Kirk Franklin song that I produced, you know, right after a Chris Brown record that's like a number one smash. You know, <laughs> you know that feels, that's a that's a great feeling. You know, Absolutely, because because we're just we're here making music, living life, and just having you know we're we're having we're having fun. And the thing about it is, is that we're not afraid to fail. Yeah. You know, you know, we're not we're not we're not afraid to fail. I saw a quote uh, the other day it said if if you're afraid to fail, then you're afraid to learn. You know, and that's, that's and real that was, talk. You know, you know, and, and that was, that's that's always kind of like you know, kind of like my end. when I was doing the um the hero album with Kirk back in like 2005. I would wake up every day, and that's when the the uh, Jay Z put out this record called Fade to Black. Oh yeah, and I, you know, you know, um, no, I'm sorry, he, no, no, he put out the, the Black album. But but it but it had an accompanying documentary called Fade to Black, and I watched Fade to Black every morning when I was recording that record because it was just inspiration. Because it, there there are parts in the, in that movie where every producer in there, every producer on that uh, in that documentary, it showed them searching for sounds and and looking for stuff, you know, and not being afraid to fail. Yeah. And once they once they were able to kind of learn where Jay Z wanted to go, well, they all created smashes. You know, right. you know, especially my my favorite producer, you know, past Jadilla, you know, is Timberland because Timberland will take chance after chance after <laughs> chance. After oh chance. yeah, you know, I mean, he he lives in the studio like he takes all the chances in the world, and so I've always admired people like that. Oh yeah, and, and I tell you, you know, speaking on, speaking on, along that same line, it's amazing how artists. Well, I'll just say like artists that are like out front a lot of times, uh, they don't understand the little nuances and what it takes to build a record to become a hit. It's not like you can go in and just like in five minutes, it might happen quickly, but overall it takes a lot of trial and error and a lot of listening back and ah, man, we could do better, we can do this, we can do that. And then eventually, because most people just want instant, you know, instant fame and success in a, in a hit song when they don't realize, man, some people have written a song or a melody or a hook and it might be three years later and they, they 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 merge that with something else and they become a whole nother song and you know and, and become a hit so it's, it's mm -hmm. you, you get that patience factor is, is, a, is a major deal man and that's 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 something else there man so I, I i totally can relate to that and respect where you're coming from because i know you've had your share of of credits with you know kim burrell and, and like i say kirk franklin and and even even things that are totally outside of that that realm which is you know uh i was kind of i won't say surprised but uh, the whole snarky puppy uh, phenomenon and craze was kind of amazing to me because, uh, you know, I saw snarky puppy come from Denton with kind of like a more of an experimental college kid group and then kind of blend with a lot of sort of, I guess, you, for lack of a better way, just a lot of uh, black gospel artists, jazz artists mm -hmm. in Dallas like you and kind of merged and made that thing like evolve to something that. I mean, it, it kind of took over the world for about five years, to be honest. I mean, you know, nobody can really <laughs> deny that because I'd be seeing things in Italy and Australia and everywhere else. And it'd be like, yeah. oh, you guys. So, I mean, that, that was tremendous. So so tell me a little bit. We, we, we're probably going to go to another one of your videos, but you got to just touch a little bit on on how you like became affiliated with Snarky Puppy. And then, of course, I think you, you even your recordings, you work with Rope Dope to, with, mm -hmm. you know, to, 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 to distribute those records. So, right. yeah, Mike, shout out to Mike League. I, I don't want to just run past his name and what he did. But I know when you guys got with Snarky Puppy, some of the Dallas musicians, it really took on a whole new, you know, kind of persona. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, that was, there was a time where um, they were coming to, I say they, I mean like Mike and Justin and uh, Maz and Nate, they were coming to Dallas for Denton. Because I, I remember them from being in Denton, but I was much older than them, you know. I mean, by the time they got there, I was chasing girls, so I mean, you know, <laughs> just kind of what it was. But but I, but I remember them, you know, you know, coming to Denton, and then they would come to Dallas, you know. And I think the, you know, especially you know, the like the black gospel scene is really what messed kind of messed them up. It was like, you know, we ain't never seen this before. It was like, yeah, well, we <laughs> and so 
So then Mike, <laughs> Mike started playing at uh, uh, Denny Davis's church, St. John, and, and, you know, and I think it was in Grand, was Grand Prairie. You know, and but when he did that, well, it opened up a whole nother, um, uh, it opened up a whole nother eye for him, if you will, because yeah. now he's been, now he's being exposed to the Hawkins, now he's being exposed to Thomas Whitfield, now he's being exposed to, you know, a lot of this, this gospel music that that's what we're rooted in, you know, we're rooted in it, you know, but we really didn't just stay there, you know. So oh, yeah, yeah I, you know, yeah, man, okay. that was that was that was a trip. That's beautiful, man. I say, I tell you a funny story. One thing that stu stood out to me with you, I think, and I, you can correct me. I think when you guys won your first Grammy, I think I saw a picture of you guys all out in California, and you were messing with a, uh, 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 oh, now I'm losing my train of thought. Uh, the, the, the Spanish cat that's on Jimmy Kimmel, uh, Guillermo. Oh, you, you, uh, were, you yeah. were like t making it funny yeah. with him, and and it was like all over the internet. I was like, man, this is crazy. What is Sean Martin doing with this cat? And I, I don't know if y'all performed on Jimmy Kimmel, but you certainly were. You know, y'all y'all had that picture kind of went viral. That was, that was pretty cool, man. He was doing the uh, <laughs> he was doing he was doing the, the red carpet. Uh, he was doing the red carpet uh, uh, interview for for the Kimmel show, and it was yeah, it was me and David Crosby. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and, so, and we were doing it. And so his thing was he was trying to get everybody to take a shot of tequila. The problem is. Is that I had just promised my wife that I would go drive. It was like February. I was like, I'm not drinking, you know, February. <laughs> and I was like, but it's a shot of tequila with Guillermo. Like, I figured this out, you know, but I didn't, I didn't take it though. I didn't take the shot. There you go. There you go. Well, man, I'm going <laughs> to give you time to catch your breath because we got a lot more to talk about. We actually going to run another one of your videos, man. We gonna, I want to I get into the Sean Martin, Seven Summers, Focus, and then your yep. latest record, 3 0, and talk some more about some of those musicians and, and all kind of stuff. And of course, you can, you know, you good with just coming off the cuff with, with, with conversation. So, but I, I definitely want to let our listeners at DBFF learn more about you because I, I, I got a feeling we need to go and bring you back to Denton for the Denton Black Film Festival as one of our music performers. I'm wink, wink on that one. But I really need to think about what? Getting, getting you up here because this talking is cool. But when people hear you play and hear what you bring, the energy and everything from the go go music to everything else, I think they're gonna really be, you know, they I mean, they already know, but they just don't really know they know. So anyway, right. we we getting ready to kick it to one of your videos and come back in just a few minutes, man. But thank you so much. We're here live with Sean Martin and check it out. Unmute. Man, I need some better earphones when I'm listening to that kind of music, man. That is so, so, so nice, man. I love that. Uh, so those those two cats in the video, uh, you know, those are some younger, younger than us, I guess, younger than you and me, but two yeah. great guys that play on your, on your latest record, so-called Trio. So I know you always got a little way with words. So instead of Trio, you you flipped it to Trio, I guess, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was because it's, 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 it's my third album. So Okay. And so it's kind of referencing the fact that it's my third album and it's a trio. So yes, yeah, that's how that's how that came about. And we ended up playing, the three of us ended up playing uh, a run with, there's a band from here called Ghost Note, with Rob C. Wright and Nate Worth, uh, Mono oh, yeah. Neon. And we ended up, you know, they wanted, they needed somebody to open up for their tour. And I was like, why not? What's like, what you gotta do for the next two weeks? <laughs> What you gotta do yeah. this? And so we just started playing together. And so when that was like, you know what? You know, of course now they're solo artists in their own right. Um, you know, uh Mike, Black on Mike, he uh 
he has you know records that, you know, that he's working on and that that he has his solo stuff and matt is out actually working on his solo record so you know i never want to be a point to where i just sew up their time but i was like i kind of want to i kind of want to get this moment down on on, on tape you know oh, and yeah. maybe we'll come back and revisit it at some point you know all so, right yeah but that's so that's what it is a three of mm. so i'm so i'm a, I'm a nerd out for some of our musician listeners because some people listen to the show you know they might just be film filmmakers people are so tell me when you write music in general when i hear it as a musician a lot of it seems very intricate so is it do you do you work more with pencil and paper or is it do musicians have to learn it by ear orally and then you know figure it out like you know face to face in the room because i noticed there's not a lot of sheet music laying around usually when i see you or some of these cats play so how what, what's your approach to especially some of the more intricate music that i've heard you you, you play you know yeah, it's, so I'm 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 an either or kind of guy, you know. I mean, if I don't, if I really don't have to sit down and write, you know, pen the paper or use finale or something like that, then I probably won't, you know. Only only because it's, it's just it's just time consuming, you know. You know, um, if I if I'm if I'm trying to get out like you know you know twenty ideas in a day, I mean I'm, I'm exaggerating, but if I'm trying to get out all these ideas, then I just I'll just you know use my voice notes or just play the idea in. And then go back through, you know, and, and and clean it up or whatever. But um, but now the 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 snarky stuff, a lot of a lot of times that is recorded. You learn it from a logic file, and then they'll go back and transcribe it. Yeah, you know, you know, so you know, so you so you have the parts because you're not going to remember all those parts. You right, know? right, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, life happens. You know, you're not going to remember this one little string part. You know, but like, but like, even with Mike, with Mike and Matt, you know, a lot of that stuff just happened in in like a studio rehearsal. You know, it was no, oh, yeah. there was no. I, I almost called the album "No Rhyme, No Reason," but I remember George Duke had an album that said that. So yeah, yeah, that. yeah, and that's a beautiful yeah. record by George Duke too. Yeah, beautiful record. <laughs> Oh yeah, beautiful record. Yeah, you know? yeah, Duke is a master. So hey, man, we got another special guest. I think it's gonna hop on with us. Our festival director for the last seven years and the founder of the Denton Black Film Festival is a uh, brother Harry Eady. And uh, I hope he, uh, he he was somewhere running around the studio, but I think he's gonna pop on with us. And Harry. Okay. Uh, he remembers a lot of you guys because he's been affiliated with Moore Street Baptist Church in Denton for like 25 Moore Street. years. Oh, Lord. So yeah, he okay. knows RC and all yeah. all your crew, RC Gordon, Kenny, different guys. Gordon, yeah. yeah uh -huh. so, so, so Harry, uh, Harry, you got to jump on in. Harry Eady, this is Sean Martin. I've been telling you about Sean for some time, but I'm glad we finally pulled it all together and here we are together. So Harry Eady, festival director, Sean Martin, a mus musician and producer extraordinaire. Welcome. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Welcome, Sean. It's a pleasure and an honor to meet with you. Absolutely. The pleasure is on mine. And we actually have the same first name. My, 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 my legal first name is Harold. Well, then you're a blessed individual. <laughs> come on. Come on, Harry. Talk about <laughs> it. I'm talking about. You I tell you. It. Yeah. I just <laughs> worry when people say things like um, Dirty Harry, right? And then you say... <laughs> Wait a minute! Right, right, right. Yeah, but that, yeah. that's a generational thing too. I, I, I have to remember that. Yeah. 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 Well, but Sean, Harry is a music lover because of all the people that I, I work with and and, and volunteer and different do different things, he has more musical questions about different artists, genres, and whether people can really play or whether they just faking and shaking. He is the one that always say, he'll say, Nick, now tell me something. Now, was that guy, was he, you know, this and that about a different show? So I always credit Harry with like, he has a, a, a discerning ear and eye and, and you know, for, for musicians. So, you know, once yeah. he really gets into some of your music, which he, like I say, Sean, millions of people have heard you and might not even know your name of what they've heard you playing on. Because I could right. do a who's who, but we're not really just trying to, you know, that's not really the thing. But, but obviously, Kirk Franklin... Uh, uh, Erica Badu, Kim Burrell, and we got to touch on Erica because she's a local uh, Booker T, yeah. you know, alumni, yeah, and, right. and you know, and and she kind of led the scene in the neo soul in the, in, the, in the late late nineties to to you know make yeah. a lot of you guys you know shine. So so anyway, right. I mean, Harry, I'm, I'm I got, Harry, you got anything to say before I just I'm sorry I, I get excited and start talking to him about musicians. So Harry might want to throw something in before I talk about you know. <laughs> yeah. So so what I would say is that. Uh, I have a lot of questions, right? Because I, I'm always trying to learn. And music has always fascinated me 
particularly jazz and, and, and gospel too, uh, particularly the ability to to hear and, and, and be able to play. And you may or may not know Patrick Johnson from Moore Street uh, Baptist Church, but yeah, anyway, uh -huh. yeah, he and he and RC were big buds, right? And still are. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I just I just look at you know how you and other people are able to perform, and it's kind of seeing the well, I, I guess the best way to describe it is when I talk to Nick and other musicians, they say the words just, I mean, the the the, the lyrics or the music just comes, right? And and that's really kind of amazing to me because I have a business background. And so, but I'm also visual. And so the people that I know that are in music like you and Nick, they say it just comes, right? And I heard Buddy Guy say the same thing. It just it just comes to me, right? And uh, and then you talked about um, people like Quincy Jones, right? And there's one of the reasons why he couldn't drive a car because he would hear something and just have to, you know, just start oh. writing it down or something, right? Yeah. So, right. Yeah. so the real question is, I mean, Talk about, if you could, that for me, like, you know, how does that feel to be able to just create or or visually create a visual language for yourself through music? You know, that, that's just want, fascinating to me. How does it feel? You want to know the truth? Okay. Always. The worst feeling in the world. <laughs> because okay. it, doesn't, it doesn't turn off, you know, but okay. I mean, you know, it, but it's, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you do have to you know, position yourself at the you know, at the majority of times, you know, to be able to get to get those ideas out. You know, I mean, and and a lot of times too, just as much as it is the idea, it's the faculty of the facility. So, you know, you know, you know, can I sit down and play this idea that's in my head? You know, and sometimes it can it can get frustrating. The other part about that is again, if you're afraid to fail, I mean, if you're afraid to fail, you can learn. You know that first idea might not be the best idea you know okay. if, you know your best idea might be the 10th idea of that first version you know and so you know it, it's a, it's a matter of you know of course it's, it's able it's, it's great to be able to sit down and just play you know and, and but a lot of times there's a there's still a, a, a process it's almost kind of like, like you say you know you're business so you know you, you're great with math you're great with numbers and so you start crunching down those numbers Right, because you have a certain budget that you want to stay up, you know, stay in. Songwriters, they have a certain formula that they want to stay in. You know, um, producers, you have a certain time limit that you want to stay in if you want to get on video. You know, you know, so you know, it's it's a. But above all, I can't yeah. lie, Harry, it is beautiful. It is fun. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I yeah, and, it, I, man, I and I can tell you, like I say, I, I, I've always seen how much these guys enjoy being on stage and playing. And, I, and I've been around town a long time. I'm not going to say how long, but, you know, a lot of time you see these guys, you know, they play regular shows and clubs and bars and different things. And it's not it's only it's because they love music. You know, it, they, you know, uh, Sean and other guys who are very accomplished, you know. They get to work out and learn ideas, you know, even when it's not like in the spotlight sometimes, because sometimes in a, in a small venue, people don't even know who you are. Why are you even there playing? They just passing through to eat dinner or get a drink. And they just like, well, I just stumbled upon this, you know, and, and, and these musicians are up there pouring their heart out, you know, and it could be a two claps or it could be dead silence or they could go crazy. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I've, and I know Sean has seen it all in that, in that regard. Oh, yeah. And I know I've seen him and I've seen him on videos talk about playing things, you know, repet re repetition and slowly to get it better. Because it, when I hear him play, Sean is a very a virtuosic musician. Is that the right word? Anyway, yeah. So, you know, he, he, he sounds very technical. Yeah, he sounds very technical and all those different things. But you know what I mean? He didn't, he didn't just sit down in the first time and then, you know, played everything perfectly, you know, and, and then just got back up and said, oh, yeah, you know, I, I've seen the work that he and other – great musicians have put in so that's that's very important to for the musicians out there listening to the show tonight you know is that it doesn't come overnight and you know you got to stay on top of it every day because somebody's always practicing you know to stay on your heels oh, yeah. you know what i mean oh yeah yeah for <laughs> yeah. sure yeah and i think uh uh stomp um uh, with um when you, when you guys did stomp god's property that was really unusual right and yeah. I I can remember doing that, I guess, two, three years, five years, 10 years. Right. That every time I hear that, it just brings back memories. Right. Mm -hmm. So you kind of created something in my mind. Right. 
um, you guys created something that wasn't really there, right? There was always the praise component, but when you heard stop, at least for me, I was like, that's it, right? I, it just yeah. makes me want to stop. And sometimes even in the church, right? When people shout, you, you're you like, well, what? And then all of a sudden when it hits you one day, you're like, got it, right? That's, it. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's, that's right. That's really what uh, I got out of stop, right? And in other songs like that, they just touch a chord. Oh yeah, 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 Absolutely. yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, it was able, it was able to reach people that would have normally been unreachable, right? Right. You know, because you know their culture, it, cu- the culture in the community was changing. You know, mm-hmm. mid nineties, ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven, everything was it was it was changing. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I totally agree with that. Oh yeah. So and we were still and we were still see clubs to go hear Nick and fingerprints. So it's- <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm honored that you that you uh got got your feel of fingerprints and and and, and did so much more beyond that. So because I, I I've listened to you guys for uh, forever. So yeah, that's 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 beautiful, man. So we got to touch on uh, what I was saying earlier about Erica Badu, who again. I remember her. I met her through Keith Anderson and some other Booker T people back a few years before you were. I, I met you, but oh, ultimately, yeah. when you were, I guess around the time you were a student in Denton, you worked with her and, and produced music for her for second, third records or that kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, what happened was, she, well, I don't know if I'm going to tell the whole story. <laughs> well, you, but well, so it's only a one hour show, but we'll, we'll come back and yeah, do part I, two. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you a piece of the story. So Erica's mom was dating a close friend of mine who happened to also be a principal. And so they came to a jazz show that I was doing um, um, after, you know, after I, I graduated from high school. So they came to a jazz show. And so Miss Colleen was like, you ought, to, you ought to get in touch with my daughter. I think she's looking for a, a new band. And I was like, okay. You know, and so and then we ended up connecting through a good friend of mine, Gino Young. Gino Young uh, became the music director at the time. And so from there, uh, Eric was like, you know, I think I want to start on another record. You know, will y'all help me? And I was like, well, yeah. At the time, I'm, I'm still a, I'm a college. I'm still I'm at the University of North Texas at hmm. this very moment. You know, I'm at UNT. Um, you know, trying to trying to figure out, God, how am I gonna graduate and how am I gonna buy these books? Right. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I'm trying, I don't want to get out of school, buy these, buy my books, graduate, get out of school, and go play music. And so she was like, you know, I, I have these ideas, but I need somebody to help me flush them out. And so we started doing sessions at the at the Dallas at, at then Dallas Sound Lab, you know. And then from there, she was like, you know, can y'all help me finish, you know, can you help me finish the record? And so it went from that to being able to um, go in, you know, it, would, it would just be me and her or me, her and Jabon or, you know, me, her and Bilal. You know, it, it's so many songs that didn't make that record that, you know, that that she did, you know. And it's a, like I said, you know, it was just a fun time. Erica taught me a lot about songwriting and producing, though. She did. She, I think the probably the bigger lessons that I got about songwriting and producing came from her. Erica never does anything that she's not true to. Oh yeah. If she if she doesn't believe in it, if she doesn't if she doesn't believe it, she's not going to do it. And I I've, I've always admired that about her. You know about her songwriting. You know about her production. You know you know her vision, her direction, where she wants to go. If she doesn't believe in it, she's not going to do it. That's why you don't get you don't get a lot of albums from 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 Badu a lot you know you know like you know she has to be able to stand by it you know and really know you know you know and really really know this this is how I'm feeling this is what I'm writing this is what I'm singing this is what I'm presenting man yeah so. that's real talk man that's beautiful that man and again another another step of of your career you know something you you took something from that. You know that, oh, yeah. that uh, you know that that just made you a better person. So, all yeah. right, we got to get into Sean Martin. So, obviously, uh, post Snarky Puppy. I'm not saying post. You probably still work with them, but you, you <laughs> did your first record, uh, 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 which I I love that Seven Summers, and I I love it from the intro on out. I wish we would have. We might have to come back and re-edit this and put Seven Summers that little intro with your mom talking and and, and <laughs> I, I, I memorized all that. And I, I I told you about that about three years ago. I said, hey man. 
that's beautiful. Yeah. I love how, how y'all put that down. It was, it was, it was, it was true to you. You know, it made the right. the term seven summers make sense. You know, you talked about right. you know not having the money or afraid or fear or this and that, and then the record came out beautiful. So congratulations mm -hmm. on the first album, which I think still deserves a lot more recognition and play. So tell me a little bit about how Seven Summers came about and then, you know, how you finished it, I guess, and then move on to, you know, focus and then even the latest record. Yeah. So Seven Summers, um, me and uh, me and Mike Lee, actually, we were having a conversation um, when right when he had just signed his deal with, with Ropa Dope, because initially I was supposed to do a Gogo album for Ropa Dope. I, I love DC Gogo music, right? I love it. You know, I, I I don't know where it came from, but I know where it came from. But I just have, I have an affinity towards it. So, um, I was like, nah, I don't want to do that just yet. I ended up doing um the snarky stuff, and so Mike was like, like, man, you got to record a record. I was like, it's funny you say that because I have I do want to do, you know, like solo jazz thing. You know, just to, you know, just to do solo jazz. So on the first record back in two thousand and Seven, seven, 2007, 2008, some, somewhere around the time, you know, me, Mike Lee, and Jamil Byron. Yeah. You know, you know Jamil Byron you know, playing on the record. So I went to uh, Nomad Studios in Carrollton and recorded, you know, my first few songs with uh, my late friend, my, my dear friend, late engineer Eric Hartman, you know, who's able to get us in and us and stuff. You know, and so that was in 2007. I didn't finish that record. I didn't finish that record, meaning mixing, mastering, everything until 2015, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, but but what it was, you know, um, because, you know, I, I don't, I never want people to be able to say that they worked for me and I didn't pay them. I never want to be able to not finish complete ideas. Um, I never want to, again, Badu, right? I never want to put out something that I don't believe in, something that's not true. Yeah. So I knew there were things that I wanted to do, all the ideas, all the songs you know, that had been written. I knew there were concepts I really wanted to pull together. And so one of the things that I had to kind of pull back on was spending money. It was like, okay, I got to start saving money because <laughs> I, like, I, I, re I really want streams on this song. I really want, you know, Nikki Ross to sing this song. I really want, you know, you know, you know production on this song. I really want to be able to do it. You know, and I gotta pay my mix engineer. I gotta pay my master engineer. I gotta get, you know, you know, um, art, uh, album art done. Shout out to Drew. Oh yeah, and you gotta do all the house cleaning, all the housekeeping for a record. All the house Not cleaning. Yet. Yeah, you know that's what's so up, man. One, so one day I was at, um, I was playing. I I do these things for Curtis King in the Muse Cafe. Muse Cafe. You know, like I would do like like two nights or whatever. And this one one time. Uh, my former pastor, but still one of my greatest friends, Dr. Freddie Haynes, he came out to, to the show and I was telling him about, yeah, you know, yeah, one day I'm gonna finish my record. I don't know, you know, <clears> this <throat> song's been my record whenever it decides to come out, you know. Da -da -da. So, the, so he comes to me that, this is on a Saturday night. He comes to me on Sunday, uh, on that Sunday morning. And he said, hey man, he said, how much do you need to finish your record? And I was like, you know what? I don't know. I just, I, I know that, because I, I, I knew I wanted strings. I don't want strings. And I knew I wanted this guy named Maurice Hurd do strings. He's a talented guy out of Detroit. Yeah. You know, I knew I knew I wanted, you know, air to mix it. You know, I knew I wanted, you know, uh, Sterling Sound to master it. I knew, the, the again, the, the, the house, the house thing and stuff. Basically, you needed a lot. I needed, I needed a lot. <laughs> so watch this. So Doc gets up after he has this conversation with me in the pit. He gets up and he was like, you know, I know we're gonna, you know, we know we're gonna take an offering, you know, ties an offering. He was like, you know, but he brings me up to the pulpit. He was like, you know, y'all know it's Sean Marks, our minister of music, you know, and he needs to finish his record. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take up a special offering for him to finish his record. Bro, blew me away. And so that's how you get the seven summers, you know, and it was like, okay, now this is 2015. And I was like, I can finally finish my record. And then I looked at the time date stamp on the all the stuff that me and Mike and Jamil did. It was seven years prior to that. I was like, dang, it's been taking a long time. <laughs> and so that's how I came up with the title of, of, of seven summers. And so when I was talking to my mom on the intro, 
I was talking to my mom, and, you know, she was like, well, you know, son, to everything there's a season, a purpose in the heaven, a time to grow, a time to you know, pluck up what's grown, a time, you know, time to plan, a time to live, a time to die. And I was like, that's the album intro. That is, you know, that's like, that is it. That is it. That is it. Because it's true. You know, and my dad would always ask, everything that's on there, it wasn't happenstance. Like, these are happens. These things were happening. My dad said, hey, boy, when are you going to finish your record? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know who I'm in my record. Like, like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. And so, yeah. you know, that was that was one of the things that was um definitely a, you know, a blessing to me. And a lot of the songs that were written were actually written um the la the latter ones, like the Yellow Jacket or yeah. um or Madiba. I wrote Madiba the day that Nelson Mandela died. I just so happened to be in Johannesburg, South Africa, the day that he died. Harry, I've never seen a party like that in my entire wow. life. I've never seen anybody celebrate the fact that somebody, like, they were like, you know, they were like, you know, they came out of apartheid X many years ago. Like, imagine if Mandela had never lived. Hmm. It's like, whoa, that's right. You know, so celebrate, you know, the fact that he lived, you know, you know, and, you know, and, you know, of course, they're going to mourn his death, but they celebrate the fact that he lived. You know, watching some kids outside play soccer, you know, you know, in a field, and they're just having some joyous time. That brought about, you know, uh, the Yellow Jacket. Um, you know, listening to or, or you know, reflecting on past relationships, you know, and then saying that how how I didn't want to be, you know, in a, <laughs> a monogamous relationship, and then I meet Monica, meet my wife, you know, and it's like. You know, so now I could, I could have my chance at love too. You know, you oh, know, yeah. I'm scared of love, so now I'm saying love don't let me down. You know, mm. you know, you know, I waited all my life to find a reason why. That's no, that's, that's my wife. You know, mm. so all these all these things that happened in the course of seven some seven years, yeah, they were able to play a part in how I crafted and created that record. Man, we got to do part two of the, of the soul talk with you, man, because I mean. You you just got <laughs> info. I mean, I mean, you like a, you you like a open like like an open book. Now I, I'm a, I got the exclusive like I'm a a, a, a Steve Harvey or Oprah Winfrey now, man, in the music game. So, so Harry, I, I, I know we I know we can't go forever because we always on the clock with DBFF. But Harry, Harry might have some things he wants to say to, before we wrap up, and then I'm gonna hopefully uh you know just talk a little bit more about what's what, what's coming up in the future, and we can go from there. Sure, sure. Yeah, I would just uh, say that. Uh, one of the things I'm always amazed at is other people's journeys. And so listening to you talk about your journey is really amazing because you do have relationships that extend beyond just music, right? Uh, people that you have invested a lot of your time and your effort with. And so that's really been amazing for me to listen to. Uh, the other thing I, I concur with Nick, we'd love to have you perform at DBFF. And and I don't know how much you, you, you know about us, but, but we're really all about experiences, right? Really just sharing. We, we do two things. We share black culture and we build community, right? And so uh, this year we're, we're going to also have um, a tech expo, which we think is really important to talk about the intersectionality of, of uh, technology and uh, film and music and all of those things. And so that would be something if you have any thoughts and ideas, you know, we'd love to uh, hear about those. And so uh, just want to thank you for participating with us and, and being there. Nick has talked about you a lot, you know, over the last <laughs> uh, probably five, six years. So I'm really glad we were oh, able wow. to have this experience with you. Wow. All absolutely. right. Thank, thank you, Harry. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, know, I know a little bit about the uh, about about the Dim Black Film Festival. I, I was actually with um, a friend of mine did a movie called Jericho. And it premiered yeah. at uh, the Den Black Film Festival. He, he yeah. was there. That yeah, yeah. Brandon uh -huh. Lewis, in yeah, Brandon. Uh -huh. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Those so, so he's part of the family already, Harry. So now all we got to do is figure out the venue and make sure his schedule is open, and then we can figure out how to get Sean Martin up here in January of 2022, and and the rest is history. You know, I love that to works do it. Me. Yeah, I love to do it. So, Sean, anything you want to tell us about upcoming? Uh, you know things for you for your career i mean obviously i know after COVID, we wouldn't even be doing this virtual thing if, if were it not for that but i guess you right. know uh in, in support of the 3 -0 record I, ho I hope that you get a chance to get out and perform and and travel some with that i mean i, I don't know what your future plans are but 
you know, I mean, it's a great record. And uh, those, I mean, I don't know, those cats that play on it, you know, like I say, uh, uh, are just tremendous musicians alongside you. So, you know, I, I think the world would be better served if they heard you do some of that, you know. Yeah, yes. Yeah, the way it's shaping up now, um, you know, of course, everything is all starting to open <laughs> back up. So um, the, 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 the biggest thing right now is just kind of keeping an eye on the world, right? <laughs> um, because like, it's like I make sure, like y'all make sure y'all do what y'all supposed to do. I, I'm not here for the for the whole you no know, yes and no vaccination thing. I'm just saying y'all just do what y'all supposed to do, um, because I I do have a month long run in Europe. Um, that is they are they are very very eager to be, you know to be on. So you know, so you, so you got to go over there as a leader with with your with your own group. With, Very with, cool. the, with the three of yeah, 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 with the three of me. Any, me, any idea Mike what Matt. month or when it, when it might start? It's in November. No, oh, November. Man. It's basically it's November one. Oh no, no, I'm sorry, November uh seventh, and it runs through. I can't say this too loud because it's going to yeah. run right to my anniversary. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you, she just don't, say she don't know. sometime <laughs> after, yeah, 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 sometime after, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're not good with keeping the cat in the bag. I've noticed a few stories you've given tonight that I feel like I got the exclusive on. So, uh, you, oh, gotta, you, you gotta be careful, especially, especially <laughs> when Col Col Colleen and, 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 and Dr. Bob, yeah, that was, yeah, 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 like, but it's all like, good, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, for sure. And then, I, and then after that, um, I'm gonna start on. I plan on starting on another record called People People. Uh and I probably start like around January, you know, yeah. and uh and you know it'll be uh, this record I want to talk about people. There their you opinions, go. their problems, you know, pain, prosperity, you know, predicaments. I want to talk about, you know, you know, people. So this this next record it'll, it'll be more like a seven summers kind of record. I mean, you gotta invite me in to play the tambourine or something. I mean, I, oh yeah, you there, Doc? That's all I, I just do that for you, man. You know, you need, you need a good tambourine player, so <laughs> I just do that, man. I don't, I don't want to get in nobody else's way. So, man, oh, you don't man, know, it's, it, yeah, man, it's been an honor. It's, it's really been a pleasure. I mean, because a lot of times musicians, we see each other at shows and we don't get a chance to talk. So, this has been, you know, more fulfilling for me than than anything, just to be able to sit down and talk with you for an hour nonstop about your career, about life, music. The whole family philosophy total. Yes, so, uh, man, it, it won't be the last time, and uh, and I'm I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna work work hard to get you guys involved with our festival, and uh, you know we we probably need to connect and talk about some different ways we can uh, even do some virtual things that we might be able to broadcast or stream, you know, worldwide if you come up here and play or that kind of thing. So, you yeah, know, we'll yeah, talk yeah, about some sure. of those things. Yeah. yeah so yeah, January. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, January 2022. But we're gonna call you real soon just to kind of start putting the putting the you know putting the works together. So man, I really okay. appreciate it, Sean. And you know, best to you and your family, man. I know you got a you got a young son, right? Oh yeah, I'm surprised I didn't yeah. hear him that at the time he wants some French fries. <laughs> all right, because, okay. I'm like, I can hear him all the way up here. Boy, I want French fries. I told him, I was yeah. like, man, listen, you can't eat French fries every day. You're not gonna be going to kindergarten with high cholesterol. You gotta fix all of this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you so, gotta break yeah. it from that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful, man. Well, like I said, good luck on everything you got coming up in the in the, in the near future, in the in the you know out in out in out in the in the far future, and every everything else, man. Really enjoy talking to you, brother. And uh, with that, I'm just gonna say we want to once again thank our great sponsor KXAS NBC Five, and uh, we want to thank everybody who supports the Den Black Film Festival. Don't forget, we're coming back with a hybrid festival, January third week of January. 2022. So if you missed us last year, or you, you only saw us virtually, we're going to be back live and in living color with live music, uh, all kind of things, dance, poetry, great films, the whole nine yards. So this is Frederick Nicholson, also known as Nick, signing off. We may give you a little bit more Sean Martin if we can rock one of his videos. So be sure and support him, seanmartinmusic.com. And we'll see you next time. We love you. Peace.